we finally have the precision machined bell housing adapter, crankshaft, flex plate, pilot adapter thingy. So first step here is um, bell housing, rover bell housing dowel pins. Those are supposed to be press fit. We've got one hole that's nice and tight. That should work. One hole got done a little bit loose, but for prototyping it should be okay. So I got a little red Loctite in here and I'll let that dry. In the meantime, let's test this thingy. This is supposed to go here and that center fits perfectly. Perfectly with no wiggle. Okay, that's bolted in there. Next thing is the flex plate. So the flex plate, <laughs> oh, just doesn't fit so close. I was fooled by the 3D printed version, which maybe shrank a little bit or it's just more flexible because that one fits perfectly. The last tolerance I need to test is this center bore here that needs to fit over the torque converter pilot. So we need to take it out of here and go, go test that. I was afraid this might happen. It's really tough to get a measurement on this because this kind of interferes with getting a micrometer. Um, so I feel like it's just too snug to fit over there. I did not have these tools before and I totally should have. But um, now I have a way to measure. Looks like the measurement I'm getting is about 1.33. Confirmed with the micrometer, about 1.33. Yeah, so the bore size that Ace used is more like 1.342, which is what I'm going to go with plus or minus 1,000. Because this sleeve seems to fit pretty good, so maybe I, sh I should go with that. I should have measured better to begin with, but not a huge deal. At least I went too small instead of going too big. So we're going to bring this over to the transmission to see if the dowels line up and fit. And we're also going to bring it over to the engine to see if the LS dowel pin holes fit. It's this one and that one. Okay. Yes. Okay. See? Oh, okay. It still fits. Good, good. So that was a lot better too. And it's tight. It doesn't wobble. Okay. Okay, now let's bring this over to the engine side. Alright, on the engine side here, I want to see that these dowel pins fit nicely and if the holes are the right clearance. Okay, a little tight. But it feels like I could maybe tap it. It's in, no problem. So now we'll put in the bolts um, and we'll test the starter. The starter is in and um, the starter fits in this hole. It has a lip that fits perfectly in this hole so it's exactly located where we intend it to. So I've sent the crank adapter back to the machinist to get reworked. Uh, in the meantime, we have to try to make some progress. We can put the engine back in finalize the engine mount since we'll have exact positioning. Um, we have to clearance the transmission bell housing to fit the starter wheel. Um, we have to modify the flex plate. So there's a few things to do. Let's start with clearancing the bell housing. I've got this template here that will show me where to cut. I actually should have printed it mirrored. Back in the hole, all I gotta do here is hold up the template and uh, mark. All right, so there it is. I've marked, marked the part that I need to remove. Gotta remove this. And uh, I forgot how deep I have to go, so I'm gonna have to measure that. Looks like the correct amount is about 20 millimeters. got this air power die grinder you could get one of these and chuck it into a drill too I presume but just a way to grind away some material okay as you can see I wrapped the trash bag around it and tucked it 
The number of times I've had to climb in and out of here is too damn high. A dust mask is probably not a bad idea. Done. It wasn't too bad other than, other than the particles sticking to everything that's oily. I used this air grinder um, and I think it went pretty well. Um, it was pretty quick, maybe 20 minutes, and I had to wait for the compressor to recharge and all that. So maybe hooking, hooking it up to an electrics tool would be faster, or if you have a bigger compressor, that would be faster. 20 millimeters deep, and I did not go through the aluminum. There's no holes that I need to patch up. Um, so looks pretty good. I think that'll do it. With the grinding done, now I'm gonna move on to my next task. What I need to do is take this flat flex plate and drill the four holes that match the torque converter in the Land Rover. So, I fashioned this. This centers on the flex plate and it gives me these four pointy ends. And my idea is I'm gonna tap on them with a hammer and mark my four four holes that way. I think that actually worked. Yeah, it actually made made four marks. Okay, there we have it. We've got a new, four new holes. I'm gonna go and take this to the torque converter and see that it fits. Okay, I got four bolts in, so it does fit. So I'm gonna make progress wherever I can, and I think that uh, I can put the engine back in the car and finalize those engine mounts. That would be good progress. Yeah, absolutely no problem. See, I got them together. The dowels lined up perfectly on the first try. And, uh, and it's looking really good. Okay, well, the engine is in place at the same height as before. It is shoved all the way to that side as far as possible to avoid hitting the diff with the oil pan. So, I'm going to work on the engine mounts again. So here's where I'm at with the engine mounts. One of them is short, one of them is long as you can see this to, to make sure that it sits on the driver's side as much as possible. <clears throat> we'll add some gussets later on, but right now I'm gonna test fit this under the car and see how that goes. Passenger side is in. Um, the length seems good, but the, this hole is too low. So I guess the engine is too low on this side. The driver's side, the short side, you see the length is pretty good too. However, on this side, the mount is too high. So we're low on one side, we're high on the other side. That means maybe the engine isn't clocked properly. Being high on one side and low on the other means the engine needs to turn slightly. I'm going to find out by, by how much are we too high, by how much are we too low, measure the distance between those two points, and then using that, get an angle by which I need to tilt the engine and um, go back to the CAD program and rotate all the Land Rover bolt holes the other way. This side is exactly three quarters of an inch too low. Seems to be about a half inch. So a half inch on the side, three quarters on the other. Now on second thought, since the two engine mounts are different, I could just make this one higher and the other one lower 
Now, is the engine level with the car? So we've got this angle gauge zeroed out. Put it on the engine, and it reads about three degrees. I also have to consider interference between the holes. If I am clocking the Land Rover holes um, this way, in this case, right, because so the Land Rover holes go counterclockwise. So this goes a little lower together. This goes a little bit higher. Is that creating an interference with this hole? Because it's too close. Going. So I have my crude notes. 23 inches between the engine mounts. One side goes up by 3 quarters. One side goes down by 3 eighths. So I'm going to let the computer do the math. This is the long engine mount. This is the short one. I found the middle. That's the pivot point of the engine. And I want this side to go up by 3 quarters. And that side to go down by 3 eighths. So I'm going to rotate this until, until the points match and see how many degrees that is. And the answer is 2.8 degrees, very close to the 3 degrees our angle gauge was saying. So got it to match up here, got it to match up there by rotating the middle pivot point. So as a quick test, I rotated all the um, rover transmission bolt holes this way. And that creates one little problem. The dowel pin for the rover is too close to one of the bolt holes for the LS. So there's going to be some interference there, and that might actually be a deal breaker. You see, if the dowel pin sits above, then it will interfere with the screw. So this could actually be a deal breaker to clocking the engine. So maybe I just don't clock the engine. Maybe I leave it like this. So that's my thought process. Went in the big circle just to end up where I started, which is usually how things go. Um, I'm just going to leave it as is. I'm going to keep going and I'm just going to design the engine mounts around this. I've got my modified engine mounts here. This one lowered and this one higher. Okay, driver's side is in and we are very close. It needs to come down more. It needs to be lowered by another 3 16 Passenger side, the long one. Let's see, that one's perfect, bang on. At this point, I am pretty happy with the design. Everything fits. I added slots here just to give a little wiggle room. I added the gusset here for strength. This is the cradle bracket. And so on the other side, we're going to use this DOM tube with these bushings and a bolt goes right through here. So this will sit on the cradle and get welded in. And there will be a bolt welded in here. Um, and that'll be on the frame rail side and that will meet with these bushings. You might remember from a previous video, the AC mount was flexing a little bit once I re released tension on the belt. So the reason it was flexing is mostly this back plate flexing like this. Um, and these little tabs also flexing a little bit. So my idea for the fix is to have this tab extend it and then bend down. And uh, same with that tab, bend down. We'll have a long bolt that goes through um, and an aluminum tube here and a little aluminum tube here. Um, so that will give us, so it'll kind of be like this down here, but another one up here. That'll give us the structure and rigidity we need. And here's what that looks like. So just adding two more bends, a long bolt, and a couple tubes here. Um, we're going to get that rigidity that we were missing. Very simple change. We'll also put a bolt through here and the tube there. Okay, actually there's one more thing I want to do in this video. I'm going to replace the oil pan with the Holly oil pan. This is the 302-5. It is the most low profile oil pan that I am aware of. And that's going to give us even more clearance than this, um, the Ace Kit recommended pan. So between 
installing this oil pan and having the engine sit higher and more towards the driver's side, we're going to gain a lot of clearance um, between the oil pan and the axle. See that difference? You can kind of see the damage where the oil pan was hitting the axle right there. The instructions, the official instructions for this oil pan require you to take the windage tray and modify it. They want you to cut this part off. And that's because the clearance here is so low that the windage tray would actually hit the oil pan. So we need to cut it around here for clearance. That's how, that's how tight this thing is. Okay, I've drawn my lines. You can cut this with anything, jigsaw, Sawzall, angle grinder. I'm going to use a maybe a die grinder or an angle grinder. Okay, done with my cuts. Now I'm going to use a flap disc on the angle grinder to clean up the edges. All right, there it is. I'm happy with that. Yeah, that's what we're going for. So. Just need to clean up the mating surface and put RTV on the seams between the block and the front and back covers. Okay, the oil pan is on, hand tight, and per the instructions, they want you to put these bell housing bolts in first before torquing down the oil pan. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our adapter plate here. Okay, now I can torque all the oil pan bolts, then finally torque the bolts on the adapter. Okay. I think I'm going to end the video here. I hope you enjoyed part four. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for part five where this thing will be running again. See you next time.